Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, thanks again for joining me for this live post after a couple of uh, false starts. Here we are. Everything seems to be working now, I hope, and I will know further from your comments if the audio and video are clear. Let me know. Or if there's a problem, please do let me know. I begin by praising our Creator and Fashioner, the creation of the uh, Creator of the heavens and the earth, and I ask uh, uh, our Creator, God, to send peace and blessings upon all of His prophets, His messengers, all of the righteous people of all time. I ask Him to bless our meeting here. Unfortunately, I have to keep it uh, brief. I was trying to start early uh, so that uh, I can uh, get uh, moving today. I have uh, a busy schedule ahead of me, and um, yeah, unfortunately, it didn't work out. We plan, and God... Uh, uh, plans. Uh, Hamza Hamza says, uh, Salam Sheikh, how are you? Stream is good. Thank you, Hamza Hamza. Yes, I'm doing fine, Alhamdulillah. And I pray that everything is going well with you as well. Okay, so let me proceed then. Uh, today I want to talk about the Quran as a, a mathematical miracle. I wanted to show you a, um, a presentation that I'd prepared and I'd shown in live, um, um, to live audiences. Uh, previously, but for some reason I can't get that uh, to work. I need to go through a tutorial on how to do a presentation here on uh, Facebook. But um, I, I was running into running into difficulties, and I'll have to figure that out uh, later on. So in the meantime, I'll work without the presentation, but uh, I will uh, hopefully uh, be able to convey to you uh, in a simple way. Uh, why I believe that the Quran is a mathematical miracle. Now, let me start uh, with some introductory comments, and we can finish all of the material today, but we will at least um, deal with some preliminary points, and then we will go to uh, ne next time uh, a more in-depth uh, study. So, uh, the, the, the Quran has been approached as a miracle from many different perspectives. The Quran itself uh, declares that this is a revelation from the Almighty God, and uh, this, uh, it, you know, book, uh, its verses are actually called signs, ayat. What are they signs of? They are signs of God's presence, God's magnificence, God's uh, um, message that, that is uh, in, this, in this book. And uh, Muslim scholars have tried to find various ways to explain why is this a miracle. Uh, some have explained this from a linguist, linguistic point of view. Some have said that, okay, it's because the Quran speaks to various audiences all at once. And uh, some have said it's because the Quran relates to us things from the past and things from the future, relating things that only God knows. So, in, in all of these uh, ways, uh, the, uh, the Quran is being uh, uh, shown to be a, a miracle. Now, in mo modern times, we found that uh, there is an alignment of things in the Quran uh, that uh, is mathematical and when we see such alignment of things uh, we, we we know that this is uh, a and, and, and you know and th this is due to intelligence it doesn't didn't just happen uh, by coincidence uh, well, I mean coincidence can explain some of this but in the case of the Quran we will see uh, that the better explanation is that uh, this is by divine uh, inspiration now let's think about some things that align in the Quran let's think about uh, the uh, alignment of uh, of uh, rhymed features in the Quran so most um, well almost every Muslim if you're watching this uh, uh, the, the, this live video, then uh, you you know that um, uh, if you're a Muslim, then you've memorized Surah Al-Fatiha uh, for sure, which we recite in our prayers. Think about Surah Al-Fatiha. It begins Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. See the ending. It's an M ending, right? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. That is an N ending uh, with a with a noon N. Um, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. See, it's back to the M. Malik Yawm din It's back to the N. Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in. The N is repeated. Ihdina surat al-mustaqim. The M. It be back to the M. Surat al-ladhina anamta alayhim. Another M. Because we had two Ns in a row. And now we have two Ms in a row. Ghayr al-maghdubi alayhim. Walad dalin. We end with an N. So we started out with an M. We ended with an N, and in between there's an interspersing of M, N, M, N, and so on. So 
uh, what do we have here? We have a pattern. We have a pattern. And uh, would you say that this pattern is uh, by design or just simply coincidence? Now, most people would say, even Orientalists, uh, well, most, you know, Muslims are not, uh, they would say that this is a pattern, that this was deliberate. But of course, Orientalists and non-Muslims in general, they will say, okay, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, composed this. And uh, he, he wanted things to rhyme. He, he wanted to end like this, you know, with, with the interchange of M and uh, N. Okay, let's take another example. Uh, a short surah of the Quran, Kul Huwallahu Ahad. So see the D ending there. Uh, Allahu Samad, another D ending. Lam Yalid wa Lam Yulad. So two D endings right there in between. Wa Lam Yakul Lahu Kufuwan Ahad, another D ending. So, you know, all of the statements are ending with Ds, with D sounds, the Dal in, in Arabic. So what is this? Is it just coincidence or is it uh, design? It's obviously design, but everyone, you know, will, will, will say, if they're not Muslims, that uh, this design was due to a human author. Human authors rhyme things all of the time. They try to make things rhyme. Now, what if we find that uh, not only the, the, the sounds rhyme, uh, but the you know the, the 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 way letters are placed in the Quran, the way words are placed, these align not only by sound but by mathematics. Then, you know, again, you can say that maybe the author of the Quran, a human being or a group of human beings, tried to make it such, uh, and therefore there's nothing to say that this is divine revelation. But when we realize that the Quran is claiming again and again this is a revelation from the Almighty God and a book like this cannot be created by anyone else, no one can produce this book, then we see that uh, the, the, from the Quran's own claim this is um, a revelation from the Almighty God and now we should try to evaluate that claim. Is it really a revelation from the Almighty God? What did the book itself mean when it declared that this is a book that uh, human beings cannot produce? It may be that uh, this is uh, a divine revelation given to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And from the point of view of that divine revealer, from God Almighty, this is uh, such a revelation that human beings cannot produce this. And uh, the Quran is daring to declare this uh, as a, almost as a challenge to others. If you think that this is a humanly producible book, then produce one like it. Uh, so looking at it uh, and from, from the point of view that there is this claim and we're trying to assess this claim, then we see that there are features in the Quran which uh, you know, are, are such that it's hard to credit this to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, or any of the persons who were with him trying to put the Quran together. Now, the, the Muslim story about this is that the Quran was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, over a period of 23 years. Uh, during that time, he recited it to his companions, the various pieces as they were being revealed to him. And uh, his companions, after his death, uh, uh, collected all of the written pieces, brought them together into the whole that we have now as the glorious Quran. In all of this, uh, all of the descriptions of this history, you don't see anybody, uh, you know, working over the material with, uh, uh, you know, an abacus on the side trying to count things, uh, with notes uh, trying to make things align mathematically. We need so much of this and so much of that. And uh, yet we find that uh, the, the words in the Quran, as a quick example to start with, and we go deeper in our next uh, post. Uh, so the, the words of the Quran uh, are, are used... Uh, you know, it seems deliberately to align mathematically. At least we can see several examples of this. So to take the words for hot and cold. Uh, we find that the word for hot uh, is used in the Quran four times in Arabic, and the word for cold also used in the Quran four times. So what, what gives you this alignment between four times for hot and four times for cold? Now, of course, uh, because it's only four, a small number, it may be easier to remember. You can imagine the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, going through his, the 23 years of his life uh, uh, during this revelatory period. And, uh, you know, he's reciting a piece here and a piece there and so on. But he has it all in his mind and he's trying to remember four times hot and four times cold. He's trying to match them. Every time he says hot, he knows that he's one up on hot. He has to try to remember to make it even with cold as well. But it doesn't stop there. 
it um, you know it continues. Uh, we uh, have, uh, for example, 24 mentions of man, rajul in Arabic, and uh, 24 mentions of, of woman, 24 and 24. So we want <laughs> 20 and, and 4, 24. So now it becomes difficult to illustrate and difficult also to remember because how do you remember how many times you said, you know, in so many different verses, uh, there are people today who have memorized the Quran. They're called Hufaz. Each one individually is called a Hafiz. And during the month of Ramadan now, we have uh, people in the mosques uh, reciting the Quran from memory in the public uh, prayers. So they've memorized the whole book. But if you ask them how many times is, uh, does man occur in the Quran, how many times woman, probably they don't know unless they have listened to a lecture like this or they've read a book on this uh, subject. But in memorizing the Quran, one does not remember. Many of you have memorized various verses of the Quran, so and many, many, many chapters of the Quran. If I ask you how many times does a particular word occur in what you have memorized, and not necessarily the whole Quran, you, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't know, uh, you, you know, because you never studied it from that perspective. So who does this? Like, let's say you're writing a, uh, a, an essay for school and your professor tells you to write it uh, with so many words. You're, you should be arranged maybe between uh, 4,000 and 6,000 words. So uh, you, you, if the range is very narrow, you struggle because if you write too much, you go above and then you try to cut it down. You take some stuff out, then you find that you're below the, the threshold. Um, so that, that's counting the totality of a total number of words altogether. Now, uh, if, if you were to ask yourself, how many times did I use a particular word? You can do a search and find now with using, uh, you know, whether you're typing in uh, um, Word or Microsoft Word or whatever, uh, you, then you will see how many times that word occurs. But other than that, you wouldn't have it in, in mind. So the question is, how did the Prophet Muhammad and whom be peace keep in mind uh, that these numbers numbers. Now we're not done because uh, Jesus and Adam um, are both mentioned by name in the Quran 25 times, which is interesting because the Quran says in Surah 3 verse number 59, Adam. Uh, certainly the example of Jesus in the sight of God is like the example of, uh, of Adam. Uh, God created him from dust and then said to him, be, and he was. So the, the, the point here the Quran seems to be driving forth is that Jesus is like Adam in that God created Adam and therefore God created Jesus as well. But there is another dimension to this now that we can see that the name Jesus occurs 25 times in the Quran and the name Adam occurs also 25 times in the Quran. Now, we often uh, contrast uh, shaitan and malaika. Satan stands for evil, malaika, angels stands uh, for good. And um, uh, we, we, it's interesting that the name uh, shaitan uh, in the Quran without any adjuncts, occurs uh, 68 times. I'll explain what is meant by adjuncts in a moment. And uh, the uh, name Malaika, the word Malaika, which means angels, uh, occurs uh, without adjuncts uh, exactly 68 times as well. And now let's say we include the adjuncts, which means uh, words like Shayatinuhum, means uh, they're, they're Satans. And we include on the other side adjuncts with malaika, so uh, malaika angels, so malaika to who? His angels, as an example. So it has an adjunct. It has you know a a something added, tacked on at the end. So shaitan, shaitanu, uh, shaitino hum, their shaitan, um, angels, his angels, malaika, malaika is angels, malaika to who? His angels. Okay, so it is an adjunct. Now we see that without the adjuncts, there's 68 and 68. But now with the adjuncts, there are 88 and 88. So exactly another 20 more added with the with the adjuncts. So who, who is matching all of these numbers so precisely in the Quran? Now we have some 6,236 verses in the Quran. It's not just a few passages that were memorized here and there, and one can keep it all in memory and remember how many times this, uh, you know certain things occur in those. So one last example of this uh, matching of uh, words which are in contrast with each other. We have uh, dunya and akhira, this life and the life hereafter. Each one of these occurs in the Quran 118 times. 
Now, what accounts for this? Dunya means this life, akhirah, life hereafter, and these are always contrasted in the Quran. Now, of course, uh, one simple way of doing this, let's say the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, wanted to bring out this kind of uh, uh, matching feature in the Quran then he would uh, uh, want to make sure every time he mentions one of these words, he mentions the contrasting word, uh, you know, very quickly. And then he goes one by one, one by one, so that he does not confuse himself, not several of one at the one, you know, and then wait for to give several of the other. He'd have to keep a very close count. You know, I'm down by, you know, so many on the, in the uh, Akhira word, and I have to add so many words for Akhira because dunya is winning here, right? So he would have to remember all of this. So how would he, would he do that? Now let's continue. There, there are also other words which are used a number of times which seem to have mathematical meaning. So for example, the word for month in the Quran, the word shahr, occurs exactly 12 times. Uh, what accounts for this? Uh, is it a mere coincidence? Now because it's a small uh, number, 12, um, you know, it could have been 13, could have been 11, uh, whatever. It seems like, you know, this could be a coincidence. But then we notice that the word for day in the singular without any suffixes, so without an adjunct, um, occurs exactly 365 times. Uh, so what accounts for this? Now, 365 is a very meaningful number, a very unique number. It's not like your number 12, which is a dozen. That's a few here. You know, if the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, were, you know, mentioning month, 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 after a few times he got tired of mentioning month, and, uh, you know, it just turns out to be 12. You can say that's a coincidence. But uh, with day, you know, he could have stopped short at 200. Or he should have, if he likes to word, mention the word day so many, he should, could have continued till 600. But uh, why did he just stop at 365? Th th this seems to be by a design. So just as uh, we will notice features of rhyme as a design, as in Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, we notice it... Um, uh, you know, it starts with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, which ends with M. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, it's an N. Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, it's an M again, and so on. It goes uh, interspersing uh, between M and N and M and N and so on. Uh, as we see, there's a rhyming feature. Just Kulhu Allahu Ahad, like in Kulhu Allahu Ahad, we see that all of the endings are with D sound, and then some other surahs will have a different ending. Um, so, for example, the R ending, Inna Ataina Kal Kawthar, in the shortest surah of the Quran, it's an R ending. Fasalli Lu Rabbika Wan Har, R ending, Inna Shani Aka Huwal Abtar, R ending again. So, you see that th that one was designed obviously to end with the R ending. So, everyone would say, okay, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, you know, he liked to bring out these rhymes in his uh, composition. But now we're seeing, not only do the words rhyme in terms of sounds, but we see that there is a symmetry in the Quran where words are um, used a number of times which are quite meaningful, mathematical, mathematically meaningful, either because, as we've seen in the examples uh, given so far, the uh, words with their contrasting words are used uh, an equal number of times, and, uh, uh, or we see that the words by themselves are used in a significant uh, number of times, um, that uh, makes mathematical sense. Like, for example, the word for day used exactly 365 uh, times. So, altogether now, to sum up, uh, this uh, uh, body of evidence is uh, enough to uh, help us to conclude that the Quran is a divine revelation. It's not uh, simply the work of a man that you can credit to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Okay, he wanted to reform his people, so he decided to tell them that this is a revelation from the Almighty God. No, we're going deeper than this, and we're seeing that uh, there is a, 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 you know, an, a mathematical alignment of things, in this case, just simple words in the Quran, that are spread throughout the Quran, and it, it doesn't seem that uh, reasonable to credit this to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Now, uh, for him to have done this, he would have had to have a, a mind like a computer. He would have to have, uh, in his computer mind, he would have to open up something like a, um, a Google Sheet. Uh, in which he would have uh, rows and he would have uh, he would have rows and he would have columns. Uh, so in in uh, you know he would have one column for uh, hot, one column for cold, one for man, one for woman, one for 
Jesus, one for Adam, uh, one for uh, dunya, that this world, one for akhirah, the next life, one for shaitan, uh, angels, uh, uh, Satan, the, the devil, and uh, one for malaika, the angels. And then, every, then in each row, he would put one verse. Every time he recites a verse, he would have to look at it carefully. Does it mention one of these words in the various columns? Either it mentions man or woman or Adam or Jesus or Satan or um, Malaika or this life or the next, the next life. And then if it mentions that, he would have to click one in, the, in, in that appropriate column. Every time he mentions a verse, he'd have to go and click one in the appropriate column. Then he'd have to keep his uh, mind on the totals at the bottom to make sure that the totals are coming out even. So, you know, 25 times for Adam, uh, you need 25 times for Jesus as well. 24 times for man, you need 24 times for women as well. Uh, dunya and Akhira, you know, and so on. You have to keep all these uh, tallies. 115 times Dunya, 115 times Akhira. 68 for Shaitan, 68 for Malaika. And then if we add the adjuncts, 88 for, sh for Shaitan, uh, 88 for Malaika as well. So you have to keep, he has to keep mind, in mind, you know, with the adjunct, without the adjunct, and so on. So this is really too much to say that the human being deliberately did this. Uh, we have to say that this came out by some uh, rare coincidence, if it's a coincidence. But the better answer for this is that since the Quran has been claiming that this is a revelation from the Almighty God and that human beings are not capable of doing this, it seems that this is one of the ways in which Muslims should argue that this is a revelation from the Almighty God. It seems to me very straightforward. Um, so I'll leave you with those uh, thoughts. Those are, in a way, this is like a surface uh, uh, inquiry so far. And uh, in future programs, inshallah, we'll go deeper. And I'll try to figure out a way to share the presentation so that when it gets more technical, I can show you on screen uh, how the numbers uh, play out. And then you can make your notes and you can uh, do some of this research on your own as well. So that's one aspect of it, showing that the words are used in the Quran a number of times, which uh, seem deliberate, and that was not uh, deliberate on the part of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It's hard to think that he was trying to control uh, this uh, outcome, and it is obvious that this is a revelation from the Almighty God who was controlling that outcome. So I'm going to now uh, end there and uh, look at your questions and comments and try to respond to them the best I can. Let me uh, give thanks to those who have shared the stream. Thank you, Brother Omar Nizam, uh, Brother Asghar Bukhari, Sister Joyce Taylor, and uh, Brother Ra M. Um, okay, thank you. And uh, now I come to your questions and comments. So I see uh, Emmanuel... Gnomi. Okay, I have to actually go back from the, to, to the beginning. Yes, I see uh, Hamza Hamza saying, Salam Sheikh, how are you? Stream is good. Thank you, Brother Hamza Hamza. And uh, I'm doing fine, well, Alhamdulillah. And uh, Ayaz uh, Mahmoud uh, saying, Assalamu alaikum, uh, Sheikh Shaib, uh, wa alaikum salam, my brother Ayaz. Aliyu Yakubu saying, Assalamu alaikum, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, wa alaikum salam, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brother Aliyu. I was saying Ramadan Mubarak from the UK and Ramadan Mubarak to you and all of the people of the UK and everyone joining us on this stream today. And uh, from Ramzan Iqbal saying salam from the UK, mashallah, amazing speaker. Thank you, my brother Ramzan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and uh, all of your loved ones this Ramadan and forever. But Hamza Hamza saying, has there been any academic analysis of, or even refutations of the mathematical miracles? So as for academic analysis, uh, I have not seen anyone uh, refuting this. Um, uh, th there, there have been uh, maybe some, you know, passing remarks by people saying, you know, OK, so some people are fascinated by this or whatever, but 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 no refutation, no refutation. Um, and the, the, uh, th there is a, a mathematician by the name of Gardner, Gardner, I forget his um, his uh, full name. Um, so let me see if I can Google it. Oh yes, Martin Gardner, Gardner Martin, uh, Martin Gardner. Um, so he wrote a book about mathematical uh, uh, and logic puzzles. Um, he used to have, I think, a newspaper column in which he was, uh, you know, publishing some mathematical games, like just like we have like crossword puzzles and nowadays math puzzles like Takuro and so on. Okay, so um, he he wrote a book, uh, um, 
I believe the title of the book is uh, Did Adam and Eve Have Navels? And uh, in that book, he made mention of Rashad Khalifa, who um, was eventually deemed an apostate among Sunni Muslims. But uh, he was one of the first people in our modern times to speak about the mathematical alignment of things in the Quran. Some of his numbers proved to be wrong. Uh, but at the time, like he presented an impressive uh, total system where everything, you know, seems to multiply to products of 19. And uh, he sent that. He was serious. He sent that study to Martin Gardner. And Martin Gardner st uh, commented upon that in his book, um, uh, uh, Did Adam and Eve Have Navels? And uh, he said there that uh, if this is, uh, you know, if these numbers are correct, then this would really be a, a miracle. Um, but of course, some of those numbers proved to be wrong. But I maintain that enough of this study uh, brings out results uh, of this nature, which are such that the totality uh, of, of correct fe such features uh, would still indicate that uh, the Quran is a mathematical miracle. And it remains for this to be shown to more mathemat mathematicians and to get their reaction to this. Now, somebody had, on the other hand, done a positive study, someone from the University of Sarajevo, uh, but, and, and they looked at one aspect of the Quran as a mathematical miracle, and that's a very impressive study in its own right. Uh, but the presentation of that will remain for, for another day. Now, on the other hand, there have been um, um, criticisms from people who uh, debate with us. Uh, so they have a certain axe to grind. They want to prove the Quran wrong. They want to prove their own scripture to be right. So in my debate with Anthony Rogers, he pulled out a um, notes from a from a, a writing by a certain um, Ellis uh, who wrote against people who were trying to show mathematical alignment of things in the in the Bible. Um, uh, more specifically, he was uh, uh, refuting um, a, a a writer uh, whose uh, name excuse escapes me at, at the moment. Um, but he was actually from Toronto about a hundred years ago, that, that writer who was trying to show the alignment of things in the, in the Bible. Uh, but as Ellis pointed out to many flaws in that uh, study, and in my debate with Anthony Rogers, uh, he uh, tried to uh, you know, bring up many of those points as if they applied to the Quran. But those are points that apply to the Bible and to that study uh, of that Christian enthusiast. It doesn't necessarily automatically transfer to a criticism of the, of the Quran. And um, uh, my, my good friends, uh, my good friend, uh, Louis Dizon uh, has, um, uh, you know, spoken about this in, my, in his debates with me. He said, okay, this is like a sh Texas sharpshooter fallacy. You don't have uh, the uh, standards worked out ahead of time. Uh, it's as if somebody, uh, you know, first uh, shot the arrows and then they went and drew, drew the target around the arrow. Uh, so by analogy, he wants to say is like we found something like two things aligning and we say, ah, oh, bingo, like, you know, these two things align. This proves that it's a, a revelation from the Almighty God. Whereas, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, whereas uh, from his uh, perspective, this is not from, from the Almighty God. This is just a, a coincidental alignment of, of things. And we first jump on the alignment and then we jump to the conclusion. But uh, what I've shown is that there are too many of these uh, alignments. So you cannot just simply credit all of this to coincidence. Um, so the, the sum total shows that this is a revelation from the Almighty God. And... Uh, um, Finally, let me mention that uh, many years ago, I had a debate with a mathematical, with a mathematics uh, school teacher in the United Kingdom. He's from Scotland, and uh, his name escapes me at the moment. But uh, he, he, that that uh, debate was uh, filmed. Uh, oh, Scott Lucas, uh, Scott Lucas, Richard, Richard Lucas, Richard Lucas. Yes. Um, let me see if I can. Uh, uh, look up that video quickly and uh, and and give you the link for that now why am I getting it I'm just trying to go to a simple YouTube and look up
So here it is, mathematical miracle. Islam. Okay, so we had more more debates than one. Oh, and I see that he's been debating with other people too. Hmm, interesting. So yeah, I'll I'll get this link and sh and put it in the comments. Um, copy this link, and uh, here. I'll put it in the comments here for you. Check it out, okay? But not now, later, okay. So in, in that debate, uh, Lucas had a good opening presentation in which he showed, okay, you know these alignment of words that I've shown, that you can find such alignment of words in almost any document. And, um, uh, I, my, my response has been mainly to show that there is such a collaboration of uh, or, or conglomeration of uh, uh, such uh, coincidences in the Quran. And, and deeper than this, as when we go deeper, we see not only that the words are used a deliberate number of times, deliberately a number of times to match mathematically, but we see that uh, the use of the words uh, and the number of mentions of the words actually conform to mathematical formulas. So we'll, we'll see that as we go later on. So by the time it goes this deep, uh, you know, my good friend Richard uh, realized that, you know, he was in uh, like it was too much for him. He, he couldn't he had not studied the matter from, uh, you know, to that depth. He just went with the surface uh, type of thing. I, I will uh, accept that what I presented today, this is only surface level. And at this surface level, one can say, OK, well, you know, to really prove that you would have to have a list of all of the words of the Quran. And you'd have to see how many of them align mathematically and so on. And, um, you know, then you might find that these few examples don't really do the trick. Okay, I will admit that. Uh, but when we see that not only the words are used so deliberately a number of times, uh, like the 365, for example, like which other book has the word uh, day uh, mentioned 365 times? And then let's say we find such a coincidence in another book. Like is that book claiming to be God, from God? Because it could happen by coincidence. We're not, we're not denying that. So we, we, we have certain options before us. Either it's a coincidence or it's deliberate. If it's deliberate, either it's done by humans or it's done by God. So these are base, our basic choices. Now, if you say it's a coincidence, yeah, that's not, it's, it's possible. But what is the coincidence that it happens in this book, which is claiming to be from God and saying, you know, look, nobody can produce one like this. It, it's more like, likely that this is by deliberate intention. Now, let's say it's by deliberate intention from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Then he's trying to deceive people and he's trying to put these mathematical things in there to let people be impressed about it. But why doesn't he give any hint that this, there is a mathematical alignment of things in the Quran? And in fact, the Quran speaks a lot about mathematics and about uh, numbers and so on, everything being numbered by God. But it doesn't, um, you know, mention that things in the Quran are, you know, numbered like this. Um, so why wouldn't he declare his marvel to people? Why would he leave it so hidden uh, that it could only be discovered in the computer age? So, you know, everybody likes to boast about what they have done. And uh, if this was a feature known to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him himself, there's no good reason why he would not have told his people about this. Uh, so, so, see, check it out. Look, look how, you know, they could discover the rhymes on their own, but they wouldn't discover the mathematical symphony on their own. Why wouldn't he tell them? So the, the best explanation for this is that this is a revelation from, from the Almighty God. Okay, so I'll leave it at that. And uh, now I come to uh, other questions and comments. I want to finish in a few minutes because I have to run um, for now. And then inshallah next week we'll continue this uh, discussion. Uh, so um, uh, Ray M saying Assalamu Alaikum and thank you, uh, my brother. Wa Alaikum Assalam. Hamza Hamza Sheikh. Can people who have passed away hear you when you attend and speak at their grave? Jazakallah. Now, this is a mysterious thing, brother Hamza Hamza. We, we, you know, we have little information in the Quran and the Hadith about this situation. But what is uh, uh, understood traditionally, I'll just sum up, is that uh, the soul is still with the body, and uh, but not in the way in which the body was alive uh, during this, this, this life. But the soul is there. So we visit the grave, we can speak with the soul, and the soul can hear us. Of course, not with physical ears, uh, but uh, somehow, this, this communication is happening. 
Um, well, at least we should say that when we stand at the grave and we speak to our uh, loved ones who have passed away, we feel some solace and we should continue that. And uh, that would be a moment of prayer, asking God to forgive and bless this individual. So it's beneficial to do that. Um, but we, we don't have to insist that the soul is hearing us, but it is uh, a, a cultural norm among Muslims to understand that the soul actually does hear us, but not the physical body, obviously. And now I come to um, uh, Joyce Taylor saying, I love this about the Quran, wa alaikum as salam, my sister. And Hamza Zamza, I'm referring to the advanced patterns bearing in mind the way the Quran was uh, compiled. Um, so, referring to the advanced patterns, maybe you're asking me to comment upon the uh, academic study of the Quran. Well, some people have uh, looked at advanced like patterns in the Quran in terms of uh, uh, the structure, overall structure, like Raymond Farin, for example, uh, structure and meaning. He wrote a book uh, regarding that, and recently, Mariana Clark uh, compiled a volume of uh, academic articles on the, the the structure of the Quran. So, most people reading the Quran do not seem to grasp like how, how is this arranged like you're reading a long surah and it looks like it's jumping from one topic to another what's going on here so these academics show that actually there is a mathematical structure not a mathematical but but a a, um, a compositional structure uh, that is thematic and uh, you know the the author of the quran whoever this is you know knows what they're doing they, they arrange things in in such clusters of uh, of uh, discussion and then there is repetition and mirroring uh, so that uh, things are balanced in a, in a structural um, way in terms of the meaning and message of, of the Quran. Okay, so I don't know if that's exactly what you're asking about by Hamza Hamza and uh, ask me in, for more detail if needed. Okay, Jamal Kushar, Kushar saying verse 82 of Surah An-Nisa. It had, be, had it been from any other than Allah, they would have found many contradictions. You are right, Brother Jamal. Uh, this book has proven again and again to be a revelation from the Almighty God from different perspectives. Brother Farhan Najib saying, Salaam Alaikum and Ramadan Mubarak. Dr. Shabir, I'll stay always blessed every single day. Thank you, my brother Farhan. May Allah SWT bless you and all of your loved ones and all of the people of your country. Emmanuel saying, MashaAllah. Surely this is the true word of God. This isn't uh, a coincidence. There must be a grand planner in this. You're right, my brother Emmanuel. May Allah SWT bless you and everyone around you. Omar Nizam saying, Ramadan Mubarak, Dr. Shabir. I'm planning to interview Dr. Imran al Badawi this Friday, inshallah, on my podcast about this book, The Quran and the Aramaic Gospel Traditions. Do you have any questions you would like me to ask him regarding the Quran and uh, the Aramaic uh, Gospel Traditions? Um, so, my uh, brother, I haven't... Um, uh, thought about that, so um, maybe I'll, I'll think about it. And uh, if you uh, communicate with me via email during the week, then maybe I'll have uh, a question that uh, will um, will come up. But uh, oh, this Friday, not not too far away. So um, yeah, uh, continue to communicate with me, and I'll see if I have a question. Uh, for him specifically, and rather Fahad Usmani uh, asking. Um, Fado Sani asking, do you have any book in Mathematical Miracles of the Quran? Yes, there is a book uh, entitled, uh, let me see if I can pull it up here um, very quickly. Scientific Miracles of the Glorious Quran by Muhammad Sami Muhammad uh, Ali. Uh, so that um, book uh, will probably be available where, wherever Muslim books are sold, like in mosque bookshops and so on. Uh, but it's an old one, and uh, you know, I I don't uh, know if you will be able to find a copy nowadays. Um, but but see, see, I'm putting the name of the book here in the comments. So have a look at that. Okay. Um, and then. Let me scroll through here to see who else. Uh, okay. And Ramadan Mubarak from Germany by my brother uh, Ray or Ra. Uh, sorry if I mispronounced your name. Ramadan Mubarak to you too and all of the people of uh, your good country. And uh, now we come to who else is here? Okay, Abdul Qadir. 
saying, uh, Abdul Qadir saying, uh, Dr. Shabir, can you please write a book on the mathematical pattern in the Quran for us? Inshallah, eventually, eventually, uh, there is a, a brother whose name is Omar. I forget his last name now. He's actually written something about this. And that reminds me, he sent it to me for me to have a, do a review of it. And um, I have been busy. I didn't get a chance to do that. Uh, but some, somehow, sometimes somebody's going to write something about this more than what is already written. I should also mention that uh, there is a, a, a website, Symmetric Book. Um, but, but look for that yourself. I don't want to delay now because I have to run. Symmetric Book. Look for a Symmetric Book. Uh, it, it, there's a website and then there's a book also compiled with that information from the website. Um, so look for Symmetric Book on the web. Uh, so whole book is published there. And Rashid, Rashid, uh, Washid, Rashid, wa Rashid, following from Kenya. Mashallah, may Allah bless you and all the people of Kenya. Omar Nizam, do biblical and Quranic scholars in general tend to find it easy to balance their faith and the critical historical method, or do they find it challenging? Well, it's always a challenge, brother Nizam, Omar Nizam. It's not only to balance between uh, the faith and critical historical method. It's always to balance between what we believe by way of faith and what we're observing in the world around us. Uh, so using our senses, seeing the scripture, you know, there's always a trade-off there and always a, a, um, a, a need for reconciliation and believers have been doing that all of the time, uh, Muslims and non-Muslims. Uh, Fahad Osani saying, can you share the link? And uh, I have shared this link for the debate with uh, Richard Lucas. Uh, Yusuf Ahmed saying Assalamu Alaikum Wa Alaikum Salam. Shervin Abdullah saying Assalamu Alaikum Wa Alaikum Salam. Al Hakikat Al Khafiya asking, why did Al Hakikat Al Khafiya asking, uh, why did uh, Muslims always use Rashad Khalifa book, the Quran, the Last Testament, when it comes to mathematical mirrors of the Quran, especially number 19? While we know that Rashad Khalifa claimed he is a prophet of Allah, uh, Allah is talking about, and Rashad misinterpreted the Quran total. To me, I don't accept his, this, his, his book, but I don't know why we Muslims always point to his book when it comes to mathematical miracles of the Quran. Okay, so, you know, uh, so if, if one, you know, just points to his book blindly and says, you know, then this is a problem. But uh, it, what I've done here today, um, uh, my brother, you, you will notice is that I only mentioned the historical circumstance and the fact that this discussion took place. So that, that's history. That, that's a fact. Um, uh, so for, for more on this, uh, go to the website islamnoon.com and there you will find uh, some articles uh, uh, available for free in English and uh, much more in Arabic. But for those of you who are reading English only, uh, I mean, among these two languages, then uh, you'll find those two articles at least. And um, uh, so, so what Bassam Jarrar has done with uh, Noon Center for Quranic Studies is to produce uh, studies uh, that uh, build upon what Rashad Khalifa has done, but minus the mistakes and to take the studies further. So there are certain truths that Rashad Khalifa pointed to that are truths about the Quran. So regardless of who said it, uh, whether he was himself somebody for truth or for falsehood, uh, that's irrelevant now. What he said about the Quran that is true, we can use. And uh, and so we are using that, um, and we're taking the study further. I mean, it's something there to be seen. It's clear as day. It's there in the Quran. What do you do with it? So um, we don't have to follow him in, in his mistakes and in his claims to be a prophet of God. We don't have to support his claim. In fact, we, as Sunnis, we, we reject that claim. But uh, we say that the, the, some of the studies that he put, put forward uh, is evidence enough that the Quran is a revelation from the Almighty God. And yes, we don't have to make everything uh, align into patterns of 19, uh, but those patterns that do exist, um, you know, show that this is a divine revelation. So I'm going to leave it at that. I have to run. I want to thank you all for joining me today. And uh, may Allah bless you all. A quick shout out to those uh, who uh, shared the stream again. Thank you all, including Bella Barry. Uh, may God bless you, reward you all, and uh, I look forward to seeing you again next uh, week, inshallah, for a similar post. In the meantime, I have some uh, lesser posts uh, in the, uh, from the mosque uh, during the week. Uh, do join me for that as well, and uh, please support the humble work that I do by going to our website, islaminfo.com, and click on the donate button. Thank you all for watching. Peace be with you. Ramadan Mubarak. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.